Hello, welcome to Scratch 3 Printing. In this video, I would like to talk about Planetary Gearbox and I will show you how I made it on Fusion 360. Let's scratch to this topic. This video might not be the most informed video about Planetary Gearbox, but I will share what I know and how I make this teeny tiny Planetary Gearbox and the reduction of this gearbox is crazy. Just look at how small the size is. A planetary gearbox consists of three types of gears. The first one that you have in a planetary gearbox is the sun gear. This is the sun gear. The next type of gear is the planet gear, which are these right here. And the last type of gear is the ring gear, which is around here. This is the ring gear, planet gear, and sun gear. What's the reason behind all these naming? Well, I don't really know, but if you look at it, it is like our planet and the sun. The sun gear is in the middle of the planet gear and the ring gear goes around all of them. The sun gear is inside of the planet gear like this. And then all of this is inside the ring gear like this. These three combinations has three different output. The sun gear can be the input output or it can be fixed. Same with the planet gear, and the ring gear. If I make the sun gear my input, the planet gear, the fix, the ring gear will be the output just like this. So I'm going to hold on to my planet gear, spin my sun gear, and you can see that the ring gear is spinning while the planet gear are staying in place. And by doing this, I'm getting more torque. My speed is reduced, but my torque is increased. And the way that I'm doing this, my sun gear has 10 teeth, my planet gear has 20 teeth, and my ring gear has 50 teeth, and the ratio is 1 to 6. But I can do another set of this and make it a 1 to 36 reduction, which is crazy. My gearbox consists of a ring gear, two ring gear, one planet carrier, two planet carrier, one, two, three, four, five, six planet gear, one sun gear, two sun gear, a motor, a motor holder, sick C clamp, a 3x6x2 bearing, a 15x10x4 bearing. Here's how I assemble my planetary gearbox. Firstly, I install my bearing in here, then I put all my planet gear into the planet carrier like this. And I use the C clamp to clamp this down so that my gear does not fly out when it's spinning super fast. So my C clamp here, you just push it in and it locks in like that. And with that, we got our planet carrier done. Time to do our second planet carrier right here. Everything is spinning smoothly. Put in my C-clamp. Second planet carrier done. And then for my second planet carrier, I'm gonna be attaching this sun gear to this right here. It's a D shape so that it will spin without any trouble. You really want to get this all the way in and sits flush Make sure it's all lined up. And I forgot to mention the output shaft. With all this done, time to assemble. I'm going to assemble this planet carrier first into the ring gear. It's just sitting like this, spins smoothly. And at this point, I might as well just install my output. It's a hexagonal shape, so it's going to snap in there. And I can spin this as my output. Now it's time for my second set of planetary gear to go in there. There's a small rod in there to fit my small bearing. Just gonna line this up. And voila, it's all fixed in there. Next is to install my second ring gear right here, which I can just connect with this pin. So just line it up just like that. Make sure it's snug. Second ring gear is in there. We are almost finished. Lastly, I just need to put my motor, sun gear, and connect it with the rest of the gear. Line it up, snap in there, and now we have our enclosed planetary gearbox, which spins very smoothly. And for this, my input sun is here attached to a motor right here. I made a motor holder right here using these cutouts, which is really cool because the circle is a lot smaller than my motor, but when I push it in, these teeth expand outward just enough and hold it tight enough for that the motor doesn't move and I can put a bigger motor in a smaller circle so that the motor is staying in place. And I'm gonna go and test this gearbox 
with the battery right now. I'm going to be using a 9 volt battery here to power this thing. The positive and negative doesn't really matter. It will just make the motor spin forward or backward. This is not the most efficient way of doing it, but it's really good for testing. And here we go. Look at that. It's already spinning. Very cool. My motor can spin so much faster than that, but the output is reduced to 1 in 36. So for every 36 time that my motor spin, the output only spin one time, which increased the torque by a lot. This time I will hold this and try to stop it. <laughs> okay, I can barely hold on to this and I can barely stop it. It is so strong. And if you look at this very closely, you can see the planet gear inside here spins a lot slower than my second set of planet gear. Look at that. The top gear are spinning so much faster than the bottom gear. For a better, more control, if you remember, I made this power supply back in the day and it still works until today. It's just plug it into here, connect the wires to my speed control over here, and then connect my wires to my motor. If I turn this knob slowly, the power is gonna come out slowly. Look at that, I can control the motor now. And that is like very slow. The planetary gearbox is very smooth. Look at that, it spins with no problems at all. So I'm gonna increase the power. Still very hard to stop it. Okay, I'm gonna go full power right here. That is full power right there. And let me tell you, still room temperature feeling nothing, no heat at all. This motor has a voltage rating of 1.5 to 9, but my power supply box here can go up all the way to 12 volt. And this motor can handle 12 volt, but I haven't tested for a really long time. I don't want to do it indoor. If I'm gonna do that, I will have to do it outdoor or somewhere. But I'm not here to test the motor. I'm just here to test my planetary gearbox. As you saw there, it's been super fast. With the planetary gearbox ratio reduction, it makes the output spin slow, but has very high torque. Okay, enough with this. Let me show you how I modeled this on Fusion 360. Before we get to Fusion 360, I just want to show you this website right here. It's called Gear Generator, and this is their beta version. And this website has helped me a lot by figuring out my ratio and the number of teeth that I will need in order to get my gear to mesh nicely. You can set your module right here. You can do the planetary gear setup, sun gear, planet gear, rain gear, the input fix, output, you can do however you feel like. And the image right here is gonna show you, simulate it out, showing exactly what's gonna happen. And down here is really important, the number of teeth, because as you move these, it will change the ring gear. If you change the sun gear, it will change the ring gear to a different number of teeth so that your gear will mesh really nicely together. Now we are in Fusion 360. Creating gear is very hard in Fusion 360. It could be done by creating your own gear on Fusion 360, but there is this really cool add-on called GF Gear Generator. I'll leave a link down below for this. Everything will be in the description down below. With this, you can create any gear that you want, from spur gear to helix gear, double helix gear, warm gear, internal, whatever you need is all right here. I tried spur gear, it works well, but for this, I'm going to be doing a helical gear. It runs quieter and smoother. So for my setup, I'm going to be doing one for the module. The sun gear is going to be 10 teeth, gear height, it can be 10 millimeter. Pressure angle, I'm going to be doing 20 because I found that 20 degree angle pressure is a little bit stronger than 14.5. The helix angle, I'll just leave it at 15 degree. 
now we can click OK and look at that it created the gear for us which is so nice so I'm going to repeat this for the planet gear same thing but for this gear it will have to be clockwise it has to be the opposite way so, so that it will mesh nicely together the module it has to be the same thing it has to be exact the same for all the gears number of teeth it will be 20 everything else is going to be exactly the same and now we can go down here to a simple internal helical gear and so for my ring gear it will have to be the opposite now it will be the same as the sun gear so that it will match well with the planet gear the module will be one number of teeth is going to be 50 as we saw in the simulator pressure angle will be 20 everything else will be the same click ok the ring gear takes a bit to load because it's big and it's quite complicated but there we go it has loaded in and now we can look at the gears like this i'm going to be naming these so that i don't get confused so in order to figure out what is the distance that this thing has to be well i use chat gpt to the distance from the sun gear to the planet gear so that it will mesh nicely together so next what i'm going to do is make a sketch on the sun gear and i'm going to draw a line in the middle upward for the planet gear, I figured that it was 50 millimeter. So now I'm going to use this circle pattern, click my line, center point, click this circle that I created, 2.3 millimeter, and then quantity will be 3 for my 3 planet gear. I'll click finish, and now I can move my planet gear right into that position. I will click my planet gear, click M for move. I'm going to drag this gear up here, and then click on this dot for it to be perfectly aligned right there I will look at the side view and then move this back 5 millimeter so that it lines up perfectly at this point I can just click OK and now my gear is in place so as you can see here it fits really nicely with the sun gear and the planet gear in order to get this aligned I'm gonna have to move and rotate a little bit just like that about 5 degree you can play with the angle it really depends now I can go to my browser open my sun gear and move this in position it's off so i'm going to click this set pivot put it right in the middle check mark and then just rotate this a little bit so that it fits like that i'll click ok we have our planetary gear set up already so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to go to my browser pin all my gears in the capture position so that it does not move when i drag it the tolerance between these gears are very tight. It's meshing with each other at zero millimeters. So what I'm going to be doing is hide my ring gear and hide my sun gear. And I will reduce the teeth by 0.15 millimeters so that it has some clearance and my gear will mesh very nicely. I'm going to create a sketch here. I'm going to click O for offset. Offset the teeth by negative. 0.15 some offset millimeter doesn't work so just go up by one and it works like that negative 0.16 work so i'm gonna click ok now and at this point you can just extrude this but wait if you do that it's not gonna fit well because for spur gear the angle is twisted like that so if i just extrude this backward like this it's gonna lag very bad and as you can see there, it looks really bad. It's not exactly what you want. So let's cancel that. For this, it's really amazing. You can go back in the timeline right here. And for this add-on, you can see that they tell you exactly here what you created. The module, the PA, the number of teeth, and the angle of the helical gear. But that's not what we want. We want to extend the timeline and go for the sweep right here. Double click on this. And we're going to use this twist angle right here. So I'm going to copy this twisted angle. So now that we got that, there's still one more thing that we need to do. I'm going to look to the side of my gear, make another sketch. But this time I will use this big dot right here and the right, exactly right in the middle of my gear. I'm going to draw a line of 10 millimeter because that's the length of my gear. I will click finish. And now I'm going to go to create, sweep, and click that sketch that we just did and then the path will be this line right here wait a little bit for it to load there we go it looks like that but the twist angle we're going to use the exact same twist angle 
and just wait until it loads it will be so cool look at that it cuts right at the exact same angle that the gear was created so let's click ok and voila look at that our gear is a little bit smart now so if we take a look at everything now it has a little bit of clearance for our rain gear and our sun gear so by doing this it will match very nicely together okay so now that we get our planet gear set up what you might want to do is use the pattern tool but by doing this it's gonna ruin everything it's not matching well together not with anything even if we try to rotate this it's not gonna match with the sun gear and or the rain gear so that's not the way i do it the way I do it is just copy the planet gear and just open this, move it to this point right here. Now I will look at the side view and move this back 5 millimeters like that. And we can just rotate it a little bit so that it will fit more perfect at about negative 2 millimeters right there. And now I can just do it one more time for this one over here. Move it back 5 millimeters. And would you look at that, our planetary gear is complete. We have made a planetary gear right here. So I'm going to pin everything. And from this point on, you can just make the carrier that will connect these three planet gear together. And just make a connection, make a hole in the sun gear, make a connection to your motor, to a handle or whatever you want. And now we have completed a planetary gear setup if i'm gonna do every single thing that i made my gearbox the video will be like one hour long or so so i'm gonna leave you guys off right here if you want me to continue doing all the tutorials for setting up the circle the c clamp everything the motor leave a comment down below and i will do that in a future video just focus on that part only but i will show you a little bit of what i have been doing for my current gearbox right here So here's my current gearbox that I show you. Well, this one I added another set and I'll show you what the inside looks like. It looks like that. Really complicated but it's quite not and it's just look really cool. Everything runs smoothly. Yeah, let me know if you want to see this video of me adding another set, four set, five set. But for this video, this will have to do it. Let, leave a comment down below if this is clear or not and give me a feedback how I did. As you saw there, the design was quite complex at the beginning for me but as I keep doing this it gets easier and easier. To get to this point I've been failing modeling these planetary gearbox all day long. It took me two days just to get this much and these does work as well but it wasn't as smooth as the recent one. It took me so much time just to print these out. I printed over 20 times of these gear and it was still not good. But for this brand new gearbox that it works perfectly right here, all I need to do is just add some grease in there and it will be amazing. But the reason why I'm not adding grease is that I keep taking it apart, putting it back together, figure out the best way to keep doing this. And I don't want grease all over my hand, all over my desk. So that's why I'm not putting any grease in there. And for this gearbox, it only took me two hours to model everything then start 3D printing and then it fits really nicely. Just need to do a couple adjustments. I would say it's like in a medium to higher level of 3D modeling for a planetary gearbox, which is quite complicated, but at the end of the day, it's well worth it. My plan for this gearbox is to do the opposite. My input will be the output and then the output will be my sun gear, which I believe is gonna spin super fast. So if you want to see that video, leave a comment down below, leave a like on this video. And don't forget to subscribe because more amazing stuff like this is coming. And my next couple of videos is going to be crazy amazing. I'm so excited for it. Oh, and I do have another idea for this gearbox by adding two more sets, three more sets. Who knows? Let me know in the comments down below. Well, that'll be it with this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep on 3D printing.